Hello and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, the channel where we take you through a journey of men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now shoes have always been and will always be the foundation of your outfit. It's where everything starts from the ground up and it really sets the tone of your entire ensemble of clothing. And when people meet you for the first time, they often look down, they look at the shoes that you're wearing first of all, and this will form part of their very early assessment of the sort of person you are. Are the shoes well kept? Are they well shined? Do they you know, represent you as a good overall item. And of course, shoes can be also one of the most expensive items that you wear as well. As somebody um, very wisely once said, good shoes aren't cheap and cheap shoes aren't good. And that's a very good way of thinking about it. If you're ever tempted to buy a cheap pair of shoes, well, they're not good, I can assure you. They're just gonna look like a cheap pair of shoes and they're not gonna represent you particularly well when you meet people for the first time. That all important first impression will be uh, you know, not a good one. And a good rule of thumb, which somebody said a long time ago, is your shoes should cost roughly about the same as the suit that you're wearing. So in other words, if you're wearing a 500 pound suit, if you can afford to do that, you know, and your shoes only cost you 50 pounds from a discount shoe retailer, um, you've got the equation wrong. And you're not gonna look like the overall package that I suggest if you spent 500 pounds on a suit, you'd like to look like. So it's important to get the equation right and to look your very best. But it doesn't mean that you have to be financially devastated to get the shoes which match the way that you want to project yourself out there. It can be achieved far more cheaply. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Now, I've always had a strong interest in good quality men's footwear, but I've never had the funds that would allow me to buy the sort of shoes that I would really like to wear. You know, it's just one of life's cruel things. Um, I would love to buy those five, six, seven hundred pound shoes, but I've never had the sort of income which would allow me to do so. But that's not a problem. I've been able to access the shoes that I've actually wanted to wear through other means. And for me, the primary way which I buy shoes is on eBay, uh, online auction site, because there is such a wide offering of shoes in all different states uh, and at different price points, which mean that I can really get into the shoes that would suit the clothing that I tend to wear. Now, there are some ways that you can do that, uh, which will allow you to get what you want. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first of all, let's cross the bridge of eBay itself. Now, when I say I buy pre-owned shoes from eBay, many people will look the other way and they'll think, that's not for me. I'm never gonna wear dead man shoes, all right? It's not in my wheelhouse. It's not something I would like to do. For me, I'm only ever gonna buy new. And I would say to you, you need to think again about that because I've had some remarkable bargains off eBay. I have purchased some shoes which would have cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And because it's an auction, don't forget, you can pick these up for pennies in some cases. Well, not pennies, but pounds. Um, I've been able to access some shoes which would have been out of my price range because I've been steadfast, uh, determined, and I've bid at the right time on the right shoes. So don't discount buying second-hand or pre-owned shoes. Is There's not that stigma about it, honestly. If you get a pair which is in good condition, you know what you're looking for, um, you're not gambling, you know, you're gonna get something which is proportionate to the amount of money you're gonna pay, you're gonna look a lot better than if you've bought those cheap shoes from a discount shoe shop, you know, with the low quality leather, which is cemented to a composite plastic sole. You can get good quality, artisan manufactured shoes at a knockdown price. This is how I do it. Now, the first thing I do is I chase the brands which I know are going to offer really good value. Now there's a caveat to that because if you're sitting there thinking right I'm going to get on eBay and I'm going to bid up and I'm going to get myself some Crockett and Jones, I'm going to get some churches, some of these really expensive brands, Gaziano and Girling, you know the ones, these are shoe brands which their entry point is going to be four, five, six, seven hundred pounds and beyond with some of the brands we've talked about there. Um, 
you're not really going to get a killing on them because everybody is of the same mindset. Everybody knows the quality of churches, of Crockett and Jones, and if any really good quality examples of those shoes come up on the pre-owned market, you know, they're not going to go cheaply. As an auction site, people are going to bid on them, bid, bid them up, and you're not going to get a bargain. What I do is I've done my research. I know I tend to buy British manufactured shoes from Northamptonshire and I know the brands which are made up there. You know, Northamptonshire is the kind of shoe epicenter of Europe, probably the world, where the best Goodyear welted shoes in the world are manufactured by, you know, a large number of good quality uh, companies. And you can get some really good deals, but look for the brands which are less popular. Now, for me, I've always fished in the pond of Grenson. I've always fished in the pond of Sanders and Sanders, Alfred Sargent. You can get some fabulous examples of those shoes, which are the equal, almost, of Crockett and Jones and Church for some amazing knockdown prices, because they're not so popular. They're not so trendy. Grenson and Sanders, they're really not, they don't have boutiques. Uh, well, they do actually. Grenson has a number of boutiques around the world, but Sanders and Sanders don't, Alfred Sargent don't. There's a lot of really good brands out there which are not so popular. Grenson even, you know, a really good heritage brand which throws, you know, can trace their history back to 1866, um, but they've, they've sort of been on a decline over many years and they're now not considered to be in the top tier of men's footwear, perhaps from Northamptonshire, but you can pick them up at some really good bargain prices um, if you look in the right place and you bid at the right time on eBay. Now, when you're doing that research, you know, don't just look at the top end, look at the middle end of the shoe uh, market. I often wear a brand in the UK here called Loke. Now, if I was in America, I'd probably be saying the same thing about Allen Edmonds, which is the sort of uh, eponymous middle ground shoe manufacturers in North America. Here in the UK, Loke is a uh, manufacturer which has been around since 1880. It's really, uh, you know, sort of dominated the mid market when it comes to men's footwear but they make really excellent shoes. They make really good quality shoes and they've got different tiers of footwear as well. So they've got their top brand and then they've got a number of brands below that. And this is why it's important to do your research if you're thinking about buying a pair of shoes off an auction site. If it just says Loak, for instance, I wouldn't be bidding on something. I want to know, is it Lokes 1880 range, which is their premium range, which is the only range I buy from. If it was one of their lower ranges, like Loke L1 or Loke Design, these are much lower quality, much lower price point originally, definitely not something I want to add into my collection. So do your research and know what's in the marketplace so that when you place your bid, it's an informed bid. You know what you're bidding on. And even at the middle area, you know, like, as I say, Loke, Allen Edmonds, there'll be different levels of quality. Know what you're looking for so that when you place your bid, you're not going to be surprised when they turn up and they're not the standard, not the quality that you were hoping for. So when you're looking at the auction listing, there are some things you need to know about shoes and it's worth doing your research. For a start, what's it made of? What sort of leather is it? They're all going to say leather, but is it an open grain leather, a quality leather, or is it some sort of corrected grain leather, which is going to be much lower quality, indicating that the shoe isn't something that you really want to purchase. So know what leathers they are. And you know, if you can't see on the auction listing, ask the vendor, what leather is this made of? What's the quality like? Other things you really want to be aware of is, you know, the, the way that the shoe is manufactured. Is it Goodyear welted? Is it Blake stitched or Blake rapid stitched? Which would suggest that there's a mechanical stitching which holds the shoe together. The last thing you want to do is buy something which is cemented or just glued, that the sole is just glued to the upper. This would suggest that they're not going to last very long and they can't be repaired. Something which is good you welted can be repaired a number of times, which means that your shoe can last many, many years, even decades. So know about the manufacturing processes of the shoes that you're about to buy, look them up, 
online, if the company is still in existence, which they should be, um, you will have an indication of how they were made, you know, what the products are, and you can then bid with confidence up to a certain level, which you know you know you're going to get quality back in return. Now the other big thing which you've got to go on really when you're buying a pair of shoes from eBay is the images. Are the images pretty good, clear? Can you really go to town and scrutinize them? Or is there just one that appears to be a stock image, perhaps taken from the website of the manufacturer, um, which represents the shoes that you're gonna bid on? If that's the case, walk away straight away. If there's good images on there, you know, you've got a chance to really zoom in, have a look at them. Um, I've got a pair of shoes, which I purchased off eBay just recently here. And uh, these are a pair of Grenson's actually, a Semi Brogue, an Oxford Semi Brogue in black. I bought these for a a knockdown price and now the difference is if I was buying these from perhaps a thrift store or somewhere like that I could really have a look at the shoe I could look at the stitching most importantly I could have a look at the sole the sole will indicate how long the lifespan it remains on this shoe now if I was to pick these up in a store I can press down on the leather particularly in the ball of the foot and if there's any sponginess any softness it would suggest to me that this shoe is nearing the point where the leather would need to be resold which can be an expensive repair perhaps you would choose not to go down that route but uh, when you're looking at them on eBay you've got to be a bit more subjective you've got to look at them and make an assessment or you can contact the seller, ask questions. How much wear have the shoes had? You know, is there uh, any sponginess when you press down in the ball of the, of the sole? Is it, uh, you know, gonna last me for quite some time? Because when you read the, the little write-ups they put on the shoes, the descriptions, you know, they've all only been worn a few times and never in the wet. So don't be afraid to ask probing questions that will give you an indication of whether this is a pair of shoes that you wanna, you know, bid up on, put good money into, or if this is something that you're prepared just to make one bid on, and if you get it for a steal, fair enough, but uh, you know you don't want to put decent money into. Um, it's hard to tell. Have a look at those photos. Ask for more photos. Ask for more information from the seller. If they're genuine, if they're a good quality person who's interested in selling their shoes well, they won't be afraid to send you more pictures to answer your questions. So don't be afraid to ask. Now, some of the things you want to look out for to definitely avoid when you're buying a pair of shoes off eBay is things like cracks in the leather. You know, where the leather has become brittle, perhaps through the passage of time, it's become dehydrated and there are cracks in that leather because that's something which really can't be repaired. It's beyond repair and it's definitely not worth buying, particularly around the areas where the shoe flexes. So perhaps, you know, in the apron of the shoe, in the vamp of the shoe here, where the shoe will have flexed, over time they can crack if leather isn't maintained properly. And if that's the case, steer clear. What you don't want to be frightened of is light scratching, or perhaps even a downtrodden look of the shoe, if it looks a bit dirty, if it looks a bit tired, because those are things which can be easily rectified with some simple shoe maintenance, you know, a bit of cream polish, a bit of polish, a bit of uh, renovation cream, it can really bring a lot of life back to a shoe that looks tired. Um, when I'm talking about the sole and the heel, have a good look at those as well. A heel can easily be repaired, very modestly priced. A leather sole, yes, it can be repaired, it can be an expensive repair though, so you want to weigh that up. Uh, definitely you want to think about how much money you want to put into these shoes but you know don't let the shoe looking dirty downtrodden or light scratching a little bit of scuffing put you off entirely this is something a little bit of know-how can soon bring back and the shoe can look sparkling and new in you know just an hour of your time uh, of investing with some renovation work so think about that when you're looking at those photographs and another thing I would suggest when you're looking to buy a pair of shoes from eBay is go for the classics because these are going to make up the vast amount of shoes which you see. So look at the Brogues, look at the Black Capto Oxfords, look at the Semi Brogue like I'm holding here. These are going to be represented in their thousands of listings on eBay and these are the ones which you probably get most use out of as well. You know, in the different colours, uh, in the different styles. So, you know, look at those traditional styles in the traditional colours and you can pick up some absolute bargains. Now, I purchased this pair of Grenson leather-soled um, black Capto semi-brogues 
and these cost me £25 for a pair of shoes made in Britain which would have originally cost more than a couple of hundred pounds. Um, they're in really good condition and they look a bit downtrodden now, I'd agree. You know, they don't look great, but with a little bit of work, they're going to look fantastic. And there's actually going to be a follow-up video to this one where I take this pair of shoes in this exact condition as they came to me from the box, from eBay, and I'm going to restore them to their absolute former glory. Uh, and they're going to look great, I can tell already. But don't be afraid of that. So go for the classics. You won't go far wrong. So there we go. I hope you've taken some tips there because I've actually had many, many pairs of shoes which have joined my collection, which originated from eBay. And you know, you can get shoes which have barely been worn, brand new looking in every respect. And then you can have those which are a little bit more tired and they need a bit more work. It depends on the price point and it depends on your luck as well. Don't forget, this is an auction site. You know, place those bids quite low and sometimes you get lucky because people haven't heard of brands like like Grenson. They're all chasing, chasing the churches and the Crockett and Jones and you can get some really good steals if you put yourself out there and you look in the right place and get those bids in. So good luck in your shoe hunting. Let me know of the bargains that you've been able to achieve in the comments section below. I look forward to seeing you again very soon in your lovely shiny but modestly priced shoes and until then take care chaps.